Joining us now via the phone is Dr. Richard Land, President of the Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission of the Southern Baptist Convention. And Dr. Land, thank you so much for being here. Well, I'm delighted to be with you. Well, we've really seen the GOP primary battle seesaw between Mitt Romney and candidate X. Michelle Bachman, Rick Perry, and now Herman Cain. Do social conservatives really have a viable candidate this year in your view? Sure. Uh, I think they've got several viable candidates. I think there are several people that are on those debate stages that would make um, an excellent uh, presidential candidate. Um, and I would not exclude Mitt Romney. Um, I think Mitt Romney is in basic um, uh, agreement with most uh, social conservatives. Uh, I know some wonder about his conversion on the on the pro-life issue, but you know, 51% of Americans now say they're pro-life. That's up from 33% 20 years ago. That means a lot of people who used to be pro-choice have seen the light and are now pro-life, and I think Governor Romney is one of them. Now, some Republicans have said that social conservatives should call a truce on social issues to defeat President Obama. Based on what we've heard in the debates, are GOP, are GOP candidates at risk of putting too much emphasis on the economy at the expense of pro-life, pro-family, and other social issues? I don't think so. I think, first of all, that the idea you can call a truce on social issues is nonsense. You can't solve the economic problems without solving the social problems. The single greatest cause of poverty in the United States is single parenthood, which is a social issue. It's a moral issue. We've, we're a society that has gone over the last 40 years from emphasizing obligations and responsibilities to emphasizing rights and privileges, and that's how you go from a 5% illegitimacy rate to a 41% illegitimacy rate. The single greatest thing we could do to eliminate poverty in the, in the United States would be for fathers to marry the mothers of their children and stay married to them. Now, you have said that, the, there, that social conservatives have a number of good candidates right now. Could you support Mitt Romney, and could evangelicals really rally behind his candidacy in a general election? Oh, I think they would. Um, um, you know, the, the polls show that, uh, you know, 68 percent of evangelical pastors and 48 percent of mainline Protestant pastors do not believe that Mormonism is a Christian faith. But it, polls also show that um, four out of five evangelicals would vote for um, for Mitt Romney if he were running against someone like Barack Obama. Even Robert Jeffers, the pastor who made who caused all this brouhaha with his comments about Mormonism and, and a cult, said that in a general election he would vote for Mitt Romney over Barack Obama. Now, how much would it damage the nation, and what would be the specific impact if Obama were to win four more years in the White House? I think this is the most important election in the United States since 1860. Um, every 30 years ago, we have an election, uh, or so, we have an election that, that decide, you know, shifts the country. But this one um, is even more important. It's one we can't come back from. If Lincoln hadn't been elected, we would have been divided into two countries. If Barack Obama is reelected and we continue the present course that we're on, in four more years we will have gone over the cliff and we will be beyond repair. We will have made the decision that instead of remaining the United States of America, we're going to become France. Now, many Christian conservatives dallied with the promise of a post-racial presidency and cast their ballot for President Obama in 2008. Can the White House mend that fence in time for 2012? No, I don't think so. Um, I think, you know, you can only elect the first black president once, and that's been done. Uh, I saw a bumper sticker, well, my son saw a bumper sticker in North Carolina. He sent me a picture of it. It said, if you voted for Obama last time to prove you weren't a racist, how about voting against him this time to prove you're not an idiot? Well, on the international scene, let's switch gears real quickly. A major terror plot linked to Iran was revealed on Tuesday. We know that more than 100,000 Coptic Christians have been slaughtered or driven from Egypt in recent months. What is your advice to your fellow believers in terms of how Christians should respond to the way they seem to be increasingly targeted, both at home and abroad? Well, we need to be praying for them, and we need to be putting feet to our prayers by putting pressure on our elected representatives to uh, have the United States government much more involved than it is in standing up for those who have no other defenders in these countries. Um, we need to make it very clear to the governments of the Middle East that if they want to be in normal, healthy, regular relationship with the United States and continue to receive U.S. assistance and U.S. approval, 
they're going to have to um, defend the basic rights of their of their citizens, uh, including Christians. Um, and when it comes to the Iranian regime, uh, this government needs to be doing everything that it can, uh, short of direct military action, to uh, destabilize this regime. If there was a if there was a, a an honest election in Iran, the mullahs would be sent packing. The majority of Iranians detest their government. We need to take advantage of that and destabilize that government because it is a dangerous government up to and including a plot to try to kill the Saudi ambassador in the United States and perhaps blow up the Saudi embassy and the Israeli embassy in, on American soil. Now, last question real quickly, Reverend. Wall Street has been jammed with Occupy protesters for a few weeks now. The president, vice president, and former speaker of the House, Nancy Pelosi, have all voiced support for the group, which has led to more than 700 protests. Why are Democratic leaders encouraging protesters who, unlike Tea Party members, have engaged in widespread lawlessness? Well, now, that's a question you'd have to ask them. I don't understand it. Any, uh, all comparisons to the Tea Party are disanalogous. Uh, the Tea Party was a spontaneous movement. These people are mostly being paid um, and, and are uh, out-of-work people. Most Tea Party people are employed. Um, secondly, they make a mess. The Tea Party people cleaned up after themselves when they have uh, when they had uh, uh, their big rally on the mall. Uh, and um, th these people are astroturf. Tea Party was the real grassroots. Um, this is, you know, look. The Democrats are desperate. They cannot run on the president's record. He's got the worst economic performance record of any president since Hoover. And um, they, they, they're they desperately trying to turn this into class warfare. And you look at the signs on the people that are down there, they're trying to turn this into the rich against the poor. This has never worked in the past in America. And the reason is uh, Americans don't hate rich people. Americans want to be rich. All right, Dr. Richard Land of the Southern Baptists Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission, thank you so much for joining us here on Newsmax TV. Glad to be with you. Thank you.